All right, so in chapter three, there's an entire section where you need to take some time to talk about your population and your sample selection. There's a lot of information in here, um, but honestly, this is the easiest place to start when you get to chapter three because you've already kind of figured out your population and you know a lot about who you want to collect data from. Um, and just a disclaimer before you get too far into the video, this is really geared toward uh, quantitative learners. It is applicable to those who are doing qualitative dissertations, but I, I will talk about um, sample sizes and G-Power for a little bit, um, about two-thirds of the way through the video. So just be aware of that, but everybody can use most of this information. So let's talk about what's included in this section in Chapter 3. So you're going to talk about your population and your target population. You're going to talk about your sampling strategy, how you are um, sampling that population and getting the data. You're going to talk about your sample sizes. Um, and I say that with a plural because there's a minimum sample size and a target sample size. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we'll talk about your, you need to talk about your recruiting plan. How are you actually going to go and get the data step by step information? Okay, so let's look at each of these sections in a little bit more detail. So when you talk about your population and your target population, you want to obviously describe who they are and why it's important to include them in your population. You may have already talked about this in uh, chapter two as part of your review of literature. What is it about this population that needs to be studied or better understood? It could also be part of your problem space. Um, so this is where you would reiterate that information, pull in that, that same research and reference it here. Why is this population important to be included for this study? You want to talk about your inclusion, your exclusion criteria, and how the participants are going to be screened. So I'm looking for, um, for my study, um, instructional designers who are full-time uh, W-2 or contractors who were based in the United States, um, who are working predominantly at home or predominantly in the office, describing those inclusion and exclusion criteria and then how they would be screened. For my study, I actually built in screening questions into my survey monkey, and if they selected no, they were automatically excluded from the study. So it, it took away some of that um, potential error that could have been included if people are like, oh, I basically meet the criteria and then they go and take your survey. So just something to think about. You also want to talk about how you're going to reach the target population. Are you going to uh, send a survey out to a specific location or a site? So like a school district, a university, a business. Are you going to use social media? Um, or, and my apologies for not including this, are you going to use a um, service like Qualtrics, MTurk, Amazon MTurk, or Prolific? to go and get your information. Um, and you wanna talk about how you're gonna do that. So if you're working through a location, you wanna talk about where, give a little bit of information, maybe about the school district, the you know number of schools, blah, 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 but a little bit of the about us kind of information that you might find on the website. You need to talk about the participants, you need to talk about the total potential respondents that are part of that target population. And you're going to do something similar with social media. So you need to talk about the social media site, LinkedIn, Facebook, Reddit, whichever one you use, how you're going to reach your target population through that social media site. Are you using groups? Are you um, asking someone to post it for you? Are you posting your own information? Are you doing ads uh, like Facebook ads to get your population? You need to describe all of that. Um, and then you also need to provide the rationale for using that social media site, okay? Is this an effective way to reach your target population, okay? So one, you need to show that it's effective for getting um, responses, and you also need to show that your target population is active or uses um, social media sites, okay? And there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. Um, but you can show and talk about why social media is the way to do that. And then you also need to talk about uh, privacy policies, okay? Um, particularly for um, 
that my expertise is more LinkedIn than anything else because that's where I did my study. But LinkedIn has some privacy policies for groups, um, but it's really, you know, whatever you post is out there. So um, I just talked about that a little bit and gave links to the privacy policy and included that in my, um, in the appendix. Okay. If you're going through Qualtrics uh, to get your uh, data, um, when I was going through the study and uh, considering Qualtrics, there is actually a Grand Canyon University representative at Qualtrics. So when you reach out to them, find out who that is. He will give you everything that you need to know for IRB and will potentially give you more information about Qualtrics so that you can write about them. Another thing that you should do is look at other dissertations that have used Qualtrics or MTurk or LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, school districts, um, sheriff's office, those kinds of things. Look up those dissertations to see how they wrote about their target populations and how they were going to reach them and um, just get some ideas from them on what you should include. All right, your sampling strategy. So you need to talk about how uh, you're going to sample the population. So there's two ways you can do it, non-probability sampling and probability sampling. This is kind of a lot of information here, um, but just to give you a quick sense um, of some of the ways that you can do it, you'll need to go and research how you can utilize each one of these. Probability sampling is a little bit more random um, than non-probability sampling but uh, either one is perfectly acceptable and you can talk to your methodologist about what's the best approach based on your target population. Um, but again, take some time to go, I'm not gonna go into detail on what all of these different types are, um, but take some time to just Google probability sampling and non-probability non sampling and you can see uh, what the differences are. All right, then you need to talk about your estimated sample size in your sample. So this is where you're gonna do your G power calculation, okay? And this will get you the minimum sample size that you need, okay? You will need to do a G power calculation for each statistical procedure that you plan to run. So for my study, I had two research questions. I was running a t-test, independent samples t-test for the first one, and moderated multiple regression for the second one. So I ran G power calculations for both to get a minimum number. <clears throat> and when I ran them, my uh, independent samples t-test actually came up with a higher number. So I used that number as my minimum. And I, I used these parameters. So, and I'll show you here in a second. When you go into G power, you need to identify the tails. Okay, is it a one tail or a two tail test? What's the difference? If your hypothesis is saying that one variable is going to have an effect on another variable, like work engagement has a positive effect on uh, psychological capital, then that would be a one-tailed test. If you're not, if your hypothesis doesn't specify a direction and you just want to understand that there's a relationship and it may go either way, then that's a two-tailed test. Okay. Your effect size is going to be medium or 0.5. Your alpha is going to be 0.05 and your power is 0 0.80. And I'm going to pull up G power just to show you here real quick. So if I do a, an independent samples t-test, you can see there's different choices here. And the statistical test that I ran was the, the mean, a mean difference. I'm looking at the mean scores between two groups. Okay. I ran a two-tailed test. I wasn't hypothesizing any particular direction. Um, the effect size here, we want a medium effect size, and you'll see it keeps popping up. 0.5 is considered medium. Your, uh, uh, your alpha is 0.05. That will automatically already be there. And then your power, you can change that to 0.80. Okay. Okay. And then your allocation ratio, just leave that one. You calculate that and you come up with a total minimum sample size for a t-test of 128. That's 64 in each group. Okay. So that's my minimum sample size, but then you need to target, you need to calculate a target sample size. What do we mean by that? You need to add 10 to 15% for data attrition, 
and then potentially add another 15% if you think you might need a non-parametric analysis. Um, and that way you make sure that you have enough data. Okay, you may or may not end up needing to add this number, but if you need to use a non-parametric procedure instead of a parametric one that you're planning, um, you may need an additional 15%. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Um, I'll come back and try and do a little bit more on G-Power in a different video, but you will need to talk about this in chapter three. And there's an example for you um, of what the independent samples t-test calculation for uh, the g-power calculation and then last but not least you need to um, explain your recruiting plan so where are you going to recruit and you need to talk about three different ways three different steps in how you're going to recruit so in my study um, my first plan was to recruit in four different instructional design groups on linkedin if that did not get me the target sample size that I wanted, my second plan was to repeat the process with those four groups, add two more groups, and then I also posted onto my timeline. Okay, it was my second plan because when I post on my timeline, the um, potential for error increases because um, I know a lot of instructional designers, so potentially that could muddy my data a little bit so it's not ideal but it was my my second plan my third plan um, if neither of those worked was to go to facebook and post into groups onto facebook okay adding a different social media site that is um, sometimes viewed as less professional than linkedin um, again i didn't want to add another social media site, no offense to those on Facebook or those recruiting on Facebook. I just wanted to stick to LinkedIn as much as possible, but if I needed to, I would have gone to Facebook. And then if that didn't work, then I was going to go to Qualtrics and have them recruit the numbers that I still needed. And the reason I didn't choose to go with Qualtrics first is because my sample was very specific and it was going to be very expensive for them to go out and find those very specific uh, respondents. Okay, so clearly define, you don't have to do it my way, that was just one way that I did it. Your rationale may be different, um, but come up with different plans. Even if you are recruiting with a school site, uh, have the administrator email it out. Um, what's your second plan? Uh, do you have a third plan? Um, how are you going to recruit? Would you go around and hand out the surveys? I don't know if that's okay to do, but talk about different ways that you can do that with your methodologist and with your chair, and now they'll, they'll give you some ideas. The reason why it's recommended to put a number of different ways that you're going to recruit into your chapter three is because you don't wanna to have to go back to IRB, okay? So if you define all of your plans, if you know plan A doesn't achieve the target sample size, then we will move to this step. And if that doesn't work, then we will move to this step. If you've clearly defined that and IRB approves it, then if your first plan doesn't work, you can automatically move to your next plan. You don't have to go back to IRB, okay? You also wanna talk about how you will obtain site authorization, who you need to get it from. Uh, for those recruiting on social media, you need, if you're posting into groups, you need written approval from those group administrators to post on that site. It's a simple little message that you can type to them. If they just respond, that's perfectly fine. Screenshot that, put it in your appendix, you're done. You need to talk about confidentiality measures. How are you protecting the participant's identity? This goes back for social media. This goes back to the, the privacy policies and policies about posting in groups, okay? Geographic specifics, information about the area, uh, why you are targeting, potentially targeting that particular area. And then here again, talking about your participant requirements, inclusion and exclusion. Okay. And then last but not least, your rationale for your recruiting plan and procedures. Support everything that you're doing. Justify what you're doing. Point to other dissertations that have done it. Point to other studies that have done it. Identify um, the number of respondents that were uh, that responded to a study that was conducted using Facebook or using LinkedIn. Okay. So support all of your thinking provide your rationale, and you will be set up for success. 
So that's what it is um, when you're talking about your population and your sample selection for chapter three. So good luck.